Hey, what's up? This is TJP, and you're listening to the Three Count Podcast. I knew that she raised one. I come. All of your hate I come. won't change now. I come. Who you think you are? Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Three Count Podcast. We are live here on Facebook. Thank you for tuning in. Let's go down the roster. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first. Well, let me introduce myself. It's your boy, your cousin, your nephew. It's the Don Chez Evan here. I'm the host of the Three Count Podcast. This right here to my right. I uh, think that's right because it's not white, but he is white. But, hey, it's Cliff the Red Dog Miller. He's the landlord of the dog pound. So, ladies and gentlemen, there he is, the Red Dog, Cliff Miller. Hey, 35-year-old catchphrase. And hurting. <laughs> uh, happy belated birthday to the Red Dog. Birthday he was yesterday, celebrating his 35th birthday. And, uh, 35th. well. 35th. Wow, you tell it you went to Baltimore good. City School. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Baltimore County School was worse. Oh, even worse. And God damn it. Exactly. So anyway, introduce <laughs> We'll introduce you right then and there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the man who wants to correct my grammar, who's been here for 3,645,000 years, he is the Dark Lord himself. He is the supervillain, Damien Fatal. I fucking hate you all. Go to hell. <laughs> Love you too, buddy. <laughs> and introducing next. He is the 78-time bare-knuckle coronavirus surviving racist killing with his pickaxe. You know who he is. He put himself over because, hey, he books this shit. Ladies and gentlemen, the idol master, the swole one himself, uh, his royal swoleness, Chris Idol. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to report that I took down another racist today. That's why I'm not wearing a bandana. I had to kill him with the bandana. I had to choke him out. Um, always happy to be here. <laughs> Let's go. I didn't next. hear none of that. Just to let you know he that. is Cliff's to... best friend. He's rocking a Denver Broncos uniform today. Uh, go Cowboys. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Lou, the franchise. Nobody knows this yet, but uh, Chaz has officially invited me to his wedding. If not, I'm going to punch him in the face. Oh, I'm still trying to figure out why you like, hey, everybody, I'm going to lean in really close to the microphone. Oh, I can pick me up from far away. <laughs> <laughs> Loud noises. <laughs> anyway, I'll be waiting for my invite, Chaz. I'm waiting. It better yeah. happen or I'm going to lay the smack down on your candy ass. I believe yeah. you and you're still waiting like everyone else is because we still haven't sent them out yet. But it's just like last but certainly, certainly not the least. He is the man that deserves an Oscar. Amen. He's the man that deserves an Emmy. Amen. Amen. The man that deserves a Grammy, a Tony, Kids' Choice Award, People's Choice Awards, the American Music Awards. Just give that man all the awards. He is Showtime Jeremy Grimes. <laughs> Call me John Cena because you can't see me. Ain't that right, son? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't see you only on the weekends. <laughs> Every other weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this is our weekly debate show. This is the first time we're doing this live on Facebook. So everyone here on Facebook, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully, Hopefully, we'll do this again next week. Um, normally, our episode comes out on a Monday, so we decided to do the show on a Monday. But you can catch us on all your favorite uh, podcast streaming services, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Anchor.fm, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or anywhere else you like to get your podcast fancy on. So, uh, with that being said, I got some announcements, and then we'll get right into the topic. So, uh, first announcement is if you – uh, want to buy yourself a three count podcast t-shirt well you still have time to get 20 percent off today uh we have a labor day sale on pro wrestling tees.com slash three count pod 20 percent off if you use the promo code labor day so if you are trying to save some money which i think we all are here uh we, this terrible uh, economy if you ask the democrats but anyway <laughs> 
Go get yourself a three count podcast t-shirt, uh, pro wrestling tees.com slash three count pod. Use the promo code labor day, get yourself 20% off. And, uh, yeah, as you can see here, buy my merch. So also another announcement. If you have not listened or heard any of the now entering the rings, uh, featuring all the wrestlers that we have, uh, and not necessarily just wrestlers, but any other personalities that we've had on the show, you need to, uh, well, you need to go stop this video right now. Well, you can't really stop because we're live, but um, wow, this is new. I had to figure something out for this one. Yeah, just but watch anyway, our videos. Just watch the videos after we get done with this debate show. Exactly. So go back, you know, after we're done with this, go into your little podcast app, whether it's Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, Google uh Stitcher, FM, all that crap. Yeah, go back and then listen to all of them. Definitely listen to them because uh, there's some good information in there and some some cool, fun interviews. So definitely go ahead and do that. Yeah, so, see, um, well, we just we dropped our last two. We had Gabby Ortiz and uh, Miles Millennium, man. The coolest guy in the room. He's yeah. not in the room, though. So with that being said, let's get down to business. So um, before we do go into our topics um i have the official pay-per-view scores for everyone oh yeah so, i'm curious with that being said ladies and gentlemen now uh, these are the totals as of so far this includes all the pay-per-views except for this past recent takeover and uh, um we started from mania this year and we worked our way down so um cliff are you ready for your score oh god yeah your score so far, you are at a 52% correct rate. Or, yeah, I think that's the right terminology, whatever. Who cares? But, yeah, 52%. Damn. <laughs> uh, he's not. Win percentage. Yeah, winning percentage. There we go. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, he's not here with us today because uh, he's a school person, so he's in class right now. But my little brother, JJ, uh, his winning percentage is a 56%. Uh, I like to also realize I like to put out there that um, for SummerSlam he actually was uh, had the better percentage for SummerSlam with seventy seven percent. Myself, I'm no, sadly I'm tied with him at fifty six percent. Idol, your winning percentage is a, is a cool fifty, so you're right in the middle, right mm-hmm. in the middle. Uh, Damon, you're not gonna be too happy about your percentage because you're right below Justin, and that's it with a forty nine percent. Ah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh oh. He's always trying to keep me down. <laughs> Jeremy, the showtime Jeremy Grimes, his uh score, your winning percentage is fifty three percent. What? Uh recount. I don't trust your education level. Uh, I will let you know the thing. Your SummerSlam and uh your uh all out scores didn't do you any justice. So that's yeah, why but- I mean, the only justice that should have been done was they both should have been canceled about halfway through the show, but whatever. I won't disagree with that statement. And, Anthony, your score so far, you <laughs> 63%. So, right now, you are in the league. Um, I like to put out there that, Anthony, you're the, you are the only person so far to have at least an 80% on a pay-per-view. Uh, this past weekend, All Out happened, and you were – 83% correct on, on All Out. So that's what Brent brought your score super, super high up. So uh, as of right now, the Golden Pencil Award, if we were to end the, uh, this competition, Anthony would get the Golden Pencil. But we still have a couple months left. We have up until Mania next year to figure out who will get the Golden Pencil. Clearly, yeah, Anthony's been stuck months, in. Right? Clearly, Anthony's been sucking Tony Khan's dick because there's Somebody no way at all I, those, no, those Cl- winners. Cliff, is, Cliff, is Anthony getting himself. the check now, too? Did they take you off the payroll? What they happened? took me off the payroll, clearly, because my score for All Out did not reflect what, what our 83%er did. What is that? Oh, that's victory taste. That's right. That's Suck. what it tastes like? I thought that was Tony Khan's. You know what? I'm just going to. No, I spit that no, out. Go ahead. I spit that go out ahead, about, <laughs> I'd hate I'd hate for us to get kicked off of Facebook. He meant penis. I spit that out a oh, while. Oh no, I meant the thing that came out the penis. That's what I meant. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, said, I don't 
move on. We're going to move on to our first debate topic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, interesting week in wrestling. Uh, Vince McMahon, and the big boss head honcho himself, has cracked down on WWE superstars using third-party businesses. So that includes like Twitch, Cameo, and all that. So he's pretty much stated that that's all got to stop. Um, this is pretty much this is shocking news because of the fact that a lot of superstars get extra money using Cameo and Twitch. We know uh, Paige is one of them who uses Twitch. Um, I think who else uses Twitch? AJ Styles has a Twitch account. Uh, uh, Alexa Bliss uses Cameo a lot. Big E, I think he was the one that did the most. Wow. Superstar on Cameo. So there's a lot of, uh, what you call it, commotion about this specific topic. So here's the question for you guys, and I want to get your t- uh, opinion on it. Should, the, uh, should Vince be able to do this? Is this right? Um, we'll start off with you, Anthony. You're the one shaking your head. You can start us off, then we'll follow with uh, Idol, uh, Cliff after Idol, Damien, then Jerry, and I'll come in at the end. This shows that Vince McMahon is a greedy bastard. And he wants ev- a piece of every little thing. Um, I This is stupid. Literally, let, let, them, let the superstars get paid. Either A, they're doing it for fun, or B, they're doing it to get more money because you're not paying them well enough. And he just wants to be, oh, good shit. I'm going to put that in my pocket. Oh, yeah. Mm, meat sandwich. That's all I hear from him. And I think it's stupid. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Uh, uh, I guess I agree with Anthony. He, he is greedy. But at the same time, um, they all get paid pretty well. They don't need extra income. They all make a lot of money. So they're not struggling. They're not, no, one, no one in the WWE is on the streets homeless or in danger of being on the streets homeless. And if they are, they need to hire a financial advisor. <laughs> like, let's, let, let's, let's be real. <laughs> but uh, uh, is it a bit unnecessary? Yeah. But see, but I did, I did see something the other day. I think it, oh, crap, who was it? What's his name? What's the Raw Ring announcer's name? That does the oh, Mike Rome. Mike Rome. Yeah, yeah, Mike Rome. I heard that he said that basically they just can't use, they can't promote themselves as their WWE characters on any of these things. It's not that they can't use it at all. That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah, because I, I know because I know Paige on her Twitch, she just changed everything from Paige over to her actual name, Soraya. And yeah. I mean, she hasn't been fired, so. Well, they have 30 <laughs> days, so, uh, you know. Well, we'll see in I, 30 days. Yeah, what I find interesting, though, is that, like, Vince can sign – like, these guys sign their contracts over with, like, their names. So – but it's not, like – it's not their their real name. It's just, like, their character name, I guess, is what we'll put it as. Mm-hmm. But I just find it crazy that, like, Vince McMahon can come through and just say – no, I don't want. I don't want you guys doing this anymore because we own your likeness and we own your characters and we own your quote unquote real names. Like that was the thing that was like being brought up too. I think my problem with it is he that he didn't mean that for everybody. He meant like, like for example, Randy Orton. He owns Randy Orton's name because Randy Orton uses his real name when he wrestles. Right. That's what he meant by that. Or John Cena. That's what he means by that. But that means that people like John Cena or Randy Orton can't promote, like, they're, if they were to do Cameo, they can't do Cameo because they're using their name. And that's why they don't have one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but it's, I think it's crazy, though, man. It's just like, when you look at, when you look at like, Big E, you know what I mean? Obviously, Big E changed his, name, his Cameo name to his real name, um, Kofi as well. And it's just, I don't know, man. It's just, I know WWE wanted to come out with their own version of Cameo, which I feel like, you know, obviously they thought that was a great idea. I just think it's, I don't know, man. To me, it's just, it's fucked up. Like in general, mm-hmm. I understand what WWE wants to do as far as like controlling, like they want to control the narrative. Sorry, EC3, I, I know. Um, but they want to control the narrative and the superstars, they're like trying to go out there and make extra money. And, you know, apparently at Glano, like her bang commercial was like, our uh, promotion was another reason why Vince started cracking down and the Twitch streams and now being able to tell AJ Styles to not talk about how he got COVID. Like, 
there's like lots of different things that kind of led up to it but i'm like yo if they want to make money on the side like you can't stop them like that just they're going to use their real names you can still make money and there's nothing you're going to do about it so at the end of the day i, th- I guess you could still owe the name like aj styles but as far as like uncle Allen wants to do he can kind of do whatever he wants and i just think WWE just needs to ease up and just be like hey look make your money but please don't make us look bad Oh, it's my turn. Um, yeah, you uh, bum. Get the talking. So uh, I kind of feel like this is just a scenario of somebody like didn't follow protocol and fucked it up for everybody. It kind of just is. Oh yeah. What it is. Um, I get it. Is it right? Uh, it's kind of like a thin line when it comes to business. Like I hate to sound like a corporate asshole, but I totally get it. Like. Follow your fucking contract and do what you're supposed to do. This is for the people that fucked it up for everybody. Is what I'm saying. Stop being stupid. The people doing dumb shit fucks it up for like, you know, the group. It always happens. Sooner or later, somebody was gonna fuck up and do something stupid. So stop doing stupid shit. You know who you are. Yeah. Fun. That's right. We're talking to you, Drew Gulak. <laughs> <laughs> is it my turn? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Man. Yeah. So I feel like this is like, you know, how are you going to have a job that tells you you need to sign a non-disclosure agreement, but then also wants you to post on social media about your job? Um, I don't like it. Um, my favorite part of All Out, uh, besides the women's match and um, – Anybody else who watched it would probably agree. Whenever Kip Sabian gets on there and starts talking and promotes his Twitch and, you know, Tony Khan decides to do that little dig of going, this message has been approved by All Elite Wrestling. That's great because at the end of the day, we all started out as independent contractors. We're told to make our money any way possible because you're not going to wrestle forever. The WWE is not always going to line their, line their pockets for them. Not everybody's going to get a Legends contract. So I think the Lana's, the Big E's, the Kofi's, the Alexa Blisses, the Pages, which, as we can see, can no longer wrestle in a ring anymore because of something that's happened inside a WWE ring, should be able to make their money however they want to make it. You know, you just want to play this big bully character where it's like, well, no, how dare they do something that doesn't have the WWE trademark behind it? So we're going to go ahead and make our own cameo, make sure we have our little logo there, make it all, you know, the waterproofing so – it's only ours, and they can't use it. It's stupid. Let the people live their lives, okay? Actors go out and do endorsements for sponsorships and stuff like that. Athletes do supplement sponsorships, and you don't hear anybody bitching about that. Big man, old man, I'm not going to refer to you as your real name because someday I still inspire to work for the company. Just grow up. Come on, man. We're all just trying to make a dollar. Stop. Stop. Or in his case, pass away. Oh shit! <laughs> All right, so I gotta I gotta agree with Jeremy. Um, this is just another another thing with WWE just trying to make sure they have their hand in the cookie jar. Um, I think it was not also in the report when they when this came out that Vince kind of you know uh, he he compared the the WWE to Disney. And Warner Brothers saying that they have to protect their business and, you know, reinvention of their product. So I understand that to a certain extent, but what is Cameo? How is Cameo? How is Twitch, YouTube, all these other things going to hurt your business? I think in itself, it helps your business because these people are wanting to pay for your superstars, which can get them to watch the product that you barely have any viewers for anyway. So I, for me personally, I'm not understanding what's the whole big halloo. Um, they're independent contractors. So I, I, I just think the term independent contractor doesn't mean jack shit to the WWE. It's like once you sell your soul, once you've signed for us, you sold your soul. You've signed your blood contract in a sense, and you're not necessarily an independent contractor. You sold your life for how many such and such years. So 
I kind of think this is a little little premature by the WWE. And is and if it's some ploy to, you know, reinvent the product and, you know, maybe they want to come out with a, their own cameo, okay. But don't ban, the, you know, some of the superstars from off of it. You can still use them on both sites. But then I understand from a business standpoint why you wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, you want to have your logo yeah. on it. Well here, well, here would be my question, right? Like, let's say AJ Styles is on Cameo, right? He's got his own personal Cameo. And then let's say WWE, let's say, let's say a year from now, they come out with whatever their version of Cameo is, and they got AJ Styles on it. Which one are you going to, are you going to pay through, you know, AJ Styles' personal Cameo? Are you going to pay WWE for the AJ Styles? See, that's where, it, that's when it gets, like, that, that's when it gets tricky, like in a situation like that. Right. It's like, well, are they going to, you know, is the money going to go to us or is it going to go over there for the same, basically the same thing when it's like, well, we own AJ Styles, the character for the duration that he's here. So, you know, it's taking, you know, it's taking money out of the WWE's pocket. Now, can they part with that money? Yeah. But it's the same thing. It's like, it's like Mickey Mouse. You can't just throw Mickey Mouse on your shit just because you want to use Mickey Mouse. You know what I mean? Yes. So in, a, in a essence, every wrestler that works for the WWE while they're there is like Mickey Mouse. You can't just use Mickey Mouse because you want to use Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I mean, I get that. I, I get that. So then yeah. again, it's more of a money thing then. If that's yeah. the case. Eh. Hey, listen, business is fucked up. It is. <laughs> It, business, no, it is. And then, like and, flat out like it doesn't matter what business it is especially when you get on like a high level it it's fucked up like I think i'm gonna tell you I took a business class for me to tell you the first thing that they told me the first thing they told me when i when i went to business 101 was the goal of a business is to make money that is the first thing they teach you <laughs> so if something is messing with your money yeah so uh -huh. man, what are you gonna business. do about now disney I got. Oh, uh, come on, I really? Cliff, get, yeah. Cliff, get away from me! Cliff, get right. away from me! I don't, I don't want know Disney you. coming after me. I did. Uh -uh. Yeah, I no way, you, Cliff. Uh -uh. No. He's right. There's no <laughs> friends in the business. It's all about making money. That's the first. Like it doesn't matter how many bridges you burn, who yeah. you burn, or what you burn. As long as you're making money at the end of the day, that's what matters for a successful business. So Vince does not give a damn. Damn it! I said his name. The old man does not give a damn. <laughs> I mean, I, I, the, the business comes first. That's yeah, really like for real. It is. It sucks. Is it messed up for like regular people like us? Yes. <laughs> we look at it and go, oh, that's messed up. But that's just another day in the office in the business, world. right? Like if you showed that to like a, you know, an exec in any company, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I got a uh, point out comment that we got on the uh, Facebook Live. Uh, William uh, said, well, one issue is that even though Vince is a promoter, he has ascended to a place in business and entertainment that many won't. When they signed with Fox, one of uh, Rupert's kids said, finally, two entertainment family powerhouses have has come together. Even if Vince doesn't sell, he believes he's on the level of Warner and Disney. Anyone care to uh, comment on Will's um, I mean, let's. I mean, let's be honest. WWE, it's the largest, biggest, most well-known wrestling company in the world. But you're not yes. Disney. You're not right. Disney. But he's the Disney of wrestling. Yeah. Congratulations. Like he's the Disney of re the, and no one's close to in terms of business. There's no one even remotely close to his level. And I, I, I want to piggyback off of what you said on that one. I don't. That's true because. Yeah. Why in it to the to the you know the average I'm gonna say the average to the randomest person that doesn't watch wrestling, if the they see type of wrestling period they say oh that's WWE, yeah yeah all all the time like all yeah. the time. And it's, so even know, though even though WWE know, isn't wrestling, WWE is wrestling. Shrek is Disney. Some people think Shrek is Disney to this day, and I was like, wait, what? Shrek isn't Disney, but. That's the, um, you know, I have, I can't be on comparing this to Shrek, but that's what you have to think about it. Like, you know, when someone sees any type of wrestling, they go, oh, that's WWE. When it could be, you know, I just had this recently. I seen 
uh, the video, the, the Michael Jackson wrestler that, you know, he does the moonwalking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I see a post of that, and it was like, oh, that's why we can't find Michael Jackson. He's out there doing WWE now. And exactly. it's clearly oh, not. And, it, and you know what else it reminds me of? Like how if you, like any random, casual, normal person, if they see a masked wrestler and they go, oh, is that Rey Mysterio? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's so funny, it's too, because, like, if you want to talk about, like, Disney aspects, right, here's one that's kind of, like, a good example. So Natalie Portman, if you guys didn't know, she was actually in, in uh, the second Thor movie, right? She was in the first two, first one, but yeah. she wasn't. But after, she didn't come to the third one. So she was protesting against it, right? Mm. But as we found out, she's actually going to be in the new Thor movie now. So obviously they, like, mended the relationship. And that's a lot like a WWE, right? It's like you see these wrestlers leave, and they're like, I'll never go back. And – then they just wind up right back and like Wade Barrett. <laughs> yeah, like Wade oh, Barrett. Oh yeah. The only re the only reason that happens is because WWE can pay them better than any other show. Listen, money talks, man. Money it, talks. Yeah, it does. Money talks. Talk. Yeah. Talk man has money over morals. Interviews right? where he's like, "I would never accept the WWE Hall of Fame," and I'll be damned if what was it two years ago he wasn't shucking and jiving on that stage singing his song. Except yeah, in that induction. <laughs> Money over morals, right? Well, okay, yeah. But in business, it's, hey, I have a set of morals, and if you don't like them, I have these ones. That's what right? it is. <laughs> no, it is. What do you mean? No, no. It's like, I would never. Ooh, but that's a six-figure check. We can talk about it. Hey, it's like, everything around me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yes. Like, is it a little sad? Yes. But... Let's be real. Like, Whatever, I'll wipe my human, well, it's, it's the human oh, thought process. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to move on uh, to the next topic. So, AEW All Out happened this weekend. Uh, whether you liked oh. it or whether you didn't, um, it was a pretty uh, trending show as far as on social media this past weekend. Um, we got this topic, this topic and the next topic is both about All Out. But let's start with... Uh, Good old Jim Ross, the uh, voice of wrestling. Um, he came under fire this past weekend um, on social media for a comment that he made on the commentary table. So uh, during uh, the, I think it was, it was the Dark Order match, he made a comment about Anna J. And I'll quote it. So he said, uh, he asked if, if Anna J had a wardrobe malfunction or maybe that's just wishful thinking. So Jesus. A lot of people in, on social media went off saying that, oh, Jim Ross, you know, the usual when Jim says something that people don't like, he's old, he shouldn't be on commentary no more, times have changed, he's getting more like Jerry by the day. So uh, my topic, uh, the question for you guys is, was Jim Ross's comment out of taste? Uh, Want me to go first uh, since I'm the oldest? By a lot. A whole lot. <laughs> So, uh, you know what? I commend Jim Ross for taking that chance. I thought that shit was fucking hilarious. So if anybody was offended, they can eat a dick. Be offended about that. Because that shit was fucking hilarious. So, no, I don't think he should be taken off. I don't think he should have apologized. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that big of a deal. Everybody is so fucking sensitive and need to get their heads out of their own fucking asses. Period. God damn it. God, 2020 has turned everybody into a bunch of pussies. It's been like that for like All right. years now. Oh, see, that's how much I pay attention to these people. Go ahead, Jeremy. I'm going to go ahead and drop my, my two cents. Um, while I don't disagree with the super villain um it is a different time now and those are things you can't say i mean there's plenty of things that you that could have been acceptable to say and then there's things that with today's age and with it being a new company this isn't the wwe we're talking about that they could have like where jerry the king of Waller goes on and calls it the ramen noodle moonsault and <laughs> we forget about it in three weeks sorry oh jerry is always been like that he's senile he's a racist whatever this is aew brand new new set of eyes harder restrictions coming down on them 
and we just had Matt Hardy take a bump that looked like could have killed him, and they continued the match. The company itself is under so much scrutiny as is for their chair shots. I mean, I haven't seen a chair shot hit someone that didn't bust them open the hard way yet. Um, shout out to Sean Spears, though, because that's the cleanest chair shot I've ever seen, and I loved it. Um, but with it being a new company and with today's age, no, you cannot say that. So hopefully, because Jim Ross is a great commentator, and I don't believe he should be taking off TV for it, but I believe you need to set him down and you need to talk to him and tell him, Hey, Jim, good old JR, Oklahoma's finest. I love Jack Swagger, and I have no reason why. Anyway, you can't say that. And simply because we're a new company trying to compete with the WWE, and we're not going to succeed if TNT wants to take us down because you're talking about wishful thinking with a female having wardrobe malfunction. And that's all I got to say about it. Business, like we just talked about, that's not a good business outlook. Mm-hmm. All right. Go ahead, Anthony. Um, I, I get the business part of it and the whole new business part, like Jeremy said, but that shit kind of sells. I mean, people trended about what Sammy said. about And, and I'd, I'd, I'd see, Sammy's in a bad, bad set zone for me because of it as much as I like him this really isn't as bad as that it's far from it um well no it's not as bad he didn't want to rape somebody I just think that I just think that he there's there's no reprimand I don't think he needs reprimanded for it because as he said something that might be inappropriate to some but we're wrestling fans and the majority of wrestling fans love this kind of stuff. They, back in the 90s, we loved the bikini matches. Nowadays, we, we love the outfits that the girls are wearing uh, or some of the outfits that the dudes are wearing. But this stuff sells. <laughs> okay. Well, at but least he's being proactive. Thank you. Ca- Thank you. Lou, if TNT would have released a statement saying we are cutting ties with AEW Wrestling because of Jim Ross's comments – the world will be in an uproar with either being pro TNT or against it. So exactly. what I'm saying is just because they're letting it slide this time does not mean they're going to continue to let it slide because they are – AEW doesn't make TNT. TNT, though, makes AEW. Without that TV deal, AEW is not on the same platform or even the same level as the WWE. We would be seeing them on IWTV paying $10 a month to watch it anytime we wanted to watch it. We wouldn't see it every Wednesday. We wouldn't be talking about no Wednesday wars. So what I'm saying is he shouldn't be reprimanded about it, but he does need to be talked to because at the end of the day, TNT has a business that they're trying to uphold and a standard, and AEW wants to compete with the WWE. They need to continue to hold that standard as well. Okay. Well, they need to re- but it sells. Well, okay, so hold on. Let me let me jump in on this. So here's like – okay, so I agree with you, Jeremy, 100%. Like, Jim Ross, like, hey, Jim, like, you really can't be saying that kind of thing. Really needs to all be addressed. Because when you talk about – TNT went to AEW and told them, hey, chair shots are okay. Like, if there's, a, if there's blood, it's, it's fine, right? We know – we already know that controversy sells. So maybe this is a situation where – JR, like, maybe they pull JR for a week off of television to kind of cause some controversy and then, like, bring him back. No, because it's, it's going to happen. And it's not, I'm not saying that they're going to reprimand him. I'm not saying what I'm meaning. I'm just saying that because, you know, controversy creates cash. Like, it, it does. I think what's going to end up happening is nothing's going to happen to JR. It's just not. But in the same token, like, you have to have a conversation to say, hey, JR, like, listen, man, like, NWA just lost, like, two of their top dudes because of some shit they said, because of things they have said in the past. Like, they repeated stuff that they said that, that they've said in the past, right? So we know, like, um, Jim Cornette was kicked off of NWA because of his comment, right? We know they just pulled, they pulled Jay, uh, they pulled off King off of, off of doing commentary because of something that he's, because of his ramen noodle comment. 
I think you just go back to JR, you sound like, hey, man, like, don't, don't say this again, please. Oh, as we're going to have to take you off the TV. And it is what it is at that point. Um, as far as, like, TNT pulling AEW off the air, that's not going to happen because this was on a pay-per-view. And, I mean, yeah. at, at yeah, that point, I get, but, I get where you're coming from. I'm just saying that TNT, TNT will only take responsibility for the things that happen on TNT. I, and I get that. I understand completely. But with AEW having a poor, how can I say this, poor judgment calls with other things that have happened in the past. I mean, look, Excalibur is still on TV. After being suspended for three. And what he did for Heat, he did it for Heat. No, um, it, it was still not okay. Sammy Guevara literally was on a podcast, and I don't care if he was 15, 16, 17, 18, 22, 86, 103, or the supervillain's age, you can't go in and rape somebody. It's not okay. So my thing is not that – For you, Jimmy? Cool What's that? My question for you. So what you're saying is is as, as we're all young, mature adults, well, me and me, Cliff, and the, the Dark Lord are older than all you guys. Um Thanks. Tell me that. Tell tell if you look at me and you tell me that you've never said something, done something that is completely not questionable, but on the other side, and you don't think back on it and say that I uh, that you're against what you've done. Tell, have not, you done that, Lou? Lou, I'm not sitting here saying I'm a I'm I'm a saint, I'm an angel, or anything like that. I've I've done plenty that I have regretted doing. But being the smart man that I am, I wasn't recorded saying it. I wasn't on national television saying it. And I wasn't in front of a live audience saying it. I said it in the confines of either myself or I said it around people that I can or cannot trust. I guess only time will tell. If you see that Jeremy Grimes is outed 10 years from now because I finally got my shot to do wrestling on a big screen and then someone finds some rap video I did like, 10 years ago where I was singing along to some lyrics and I might have said some explicit <laughs> and I mean I kicked off for that I'm not saying I'm perfect that's not what I'm saying at all what I'm trying to say is Jim Ross will not be cancelled for what he said but TNT will be cracking down on what they do and don't do because at the end of the day they still have a standard that they need to uphold and if AEW wants to continue to compete with the WWE, they have to take that into consideration. That's all I'm saying with it. I, th I think they. I think there's a thin line of what you can and can't say, and I think this is on this line that is completely appropriate. And and the reason is is because you're trying to compete with the WWE, and playing a safe card is not going to get you anywhere. Yeah, but in the same token, like promoting that you hope somebody's shirt or pants fall off isn't that one either like when it happened with stop when it happened with sean spears at double or nothing like that's one thing but to say oh man i hope anna j has a has a wardrobe function is a completely different thing to say and that's where i get your point say, on that but in the he same didn't token, say he hoped she had one it's, he said it's wishful that, said, he it's said he said he did he or, am just, or am i just having wishful thinking <laughs> yeah he wasn't like, because oh, I want Anna just, He just said what all of us were thinking. You know, it's not like he went on air and like, ah, I hope Anna J's tit pops out. He didn't say that. <laughs> I, I, hope, I, hope, I, hope there's saying, a, I hope there's a Janet Jackson he was, malfunction here soon. Yeah, he didn't say that. He wasn't like, all right, Anna J, let's see some tits. Like, he didn't like, say like, In the same he, token, though, it's not something that needs to be pointed out, though. Like, <laughs> I get your comment, uh, Jay, but my yeah, point is that – in the end, TNT will only take responsibility for what happens on TNT, not for what happens on pay-per-view. Right, uh, that, yeah. that was the case. Whatever happened with WWE when um, – was it Cat? When Cat just whipped out her tits like live. Oh, God. USA would have had USA them. was just like, hey, man, it's controversy. And then they just let WWE roll with it. Like they didn't cancel – and I get it's a different time, but in the same well, token – that's that's my point though. Is the WWE didn't crack down on and on Raw? Yeah. Kyle, let me get your take on this. It didn't. I mean, they changed the PG thirteen. So. Yeah, true. It's like three years later. Um, my what take happened? on it. 
uh, was his comment maybe a little inappropriate? Possibly so, but I'm like, he said it on pay-per-view. He didn't say it on Dynamite. So I feel like on pay-per-view, it would be a little bit more risque. And like I said, he didn't say anything crazy. He didn't, he didn't say anything worse than anything Excalibur said. <laughs> at a PWG. Uh, he didn't say anything worse than what uh, Sammy Guevara said on a podcast. <laughs> and it's probably not the worst thing that's been said on an AEW program. Um, I don't know. It just, you know. JR was trying to, like he said on, like in his uh, statement, he was trying to be funny. Joke didn't work. I apologize. That's all I took it as. It's all right, JR was just making a little joke. I don't think JR is like trying to like sexually harass Anna J in the back or anything like that. He was just, he was trying to be entertaining. That's all. And it just, it didn't work. The joke fell flat. That's fine. Like I don't like I don't think we need to. Yeah, like, like most. Of the I thought that shit was fucking hilarious. You know what I mean? Just, same no, yeah. thing with like same thing with like King on Raw. He was trying to be funny, and the joke fell flat. <laughs> I mean, Excalibur's excuse was he was trying to draw heat and be funny too, but they didn't take it that way. Mm. Same. Not, not said, and I gotta go. I, and, uh, I, I thought about this too when I when oh no first- see Exca- no 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 Excalibur nah. knew what the hell he was doing. That's exactly. like showing up wearing a clan costume, talking about oh, funny, I'm funny. not all of them. Americans. Not everybody reads for a cue car like Corey Graves. <laughs> like you know, like you know Excalibur, the, you, you know can't see outside is the hardest part, of the trip, right? If you guys didn't know that. Yeah. Now, Lou, I know that whenever your head bud. Corey Graves reference. I didn't even hear what you said because it was talking. So, <laughs> oh, I said that the the outside, the apron is the hardest part of the ring. Yes, so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for that, oh, so yeah, I got it. That's the thing. Where I, I gotta, I gotta go with what Jeremy said. Um, there are certain things that you just cannot say. Um. And trust me and believe, I'm all for jokes and I'm all for, you know, taking that controversy route and, you know, going at it and shooting, brother. But th- it's just not the time anymore. People are more conscious and more aware of things. And I also have to agree with what Idol says. Pay-per-view, mm-hmm. you can get away with a little extraness. Also, but I, I want to I kind of add to that point, too. But it's not like JR had this written down on his notebook and was like, oh, this is going to be a great line on the pay-per-view. You know, it probably came off the cuff. And like, think of how many times you say something in your head that sounds good and it actually comes out your mouth and you go, ooh, that sounds better in my head. You know what? Now, <laughs> so that's another thing. Like, now that you said. Yeah. Ooh, that, you know what? I'm sold. You're right. You know, so that, like, that's another thing. Like, it's not like this was a line he'd been saving and was like, hey, hey can't wait till all out so I can get this line out. <laughs> Off the but, top of his head, it sounds it sound more funny. We could just keep, ar- than we keep arguing this all day because it's just like, you know, whatever people are like, oh, I'm not racist. I was just raised that way. Like, <laughs> you know, they are set in his ways because he thought of it in his head. And back in the 90s, it was cool to say. It still doesn't make it acceptable mm. here in 2020. Whether whether we were all, no, no, I'm not, I'm not whether, saying all oh, Jr. You know, nothing is acceptable here in 2020. Like it was wrong, but, but I'm just, I'm, not acceptable I'm just saying, like, let's not treat Jr. like he perfect, like he just he had been saving this in his book of notes for months, and this was like, <laughs> don't worry, I I don't have my fire Jr. T-shirt on. I'm not saying all we right, that, that, like that's, yeah, that's right. all I was saying. Let's not, you know, Excalibur, he had that promo in his head. I don't care what you say. No, you don't right. just say, oh, yes, like, you know, nah, he didn't Some just black think person of, made him of that. Mad. And then if he thought of that on the cuff, then we need to have a whole different conversation about Excalibur. <laughs> I think Excalibur's comments were an, an accident. Excalibur's oh, racist. Oh, my God. The fact that this man rolling his eyes as he says that. Oh, right. <laughs> Shut up, Anthony. Get yeah, my I'm ass. Move on to the next topic. Um, <laughs> so... Bring it back to uh, All Out. So, uh, <laughs> oh. 
Um, Matt Hardy faced off against Sammy Guevara in a broken rules match, which technically was uh, uh, what you know, last man standing match in a sense. But um, the match didn't yeah throw up the X. The X did get thrown up. Um, the match probably no more than five minutes, I think, got started. Um, Matt Hardy took a very very terrible terrible fall. Um, uh, he hit his head on concrete. Uh, the doctors came out. They checked on him. Uh, they threw up the X, and the match was called off. And later, you know, probably a couple minutes went by, and the match still went on. Matt had said that he was – I guess he had told them that he was uh, – he, he could still compete, and the match continued. Um, they went right to the finish where Matt climbed up a scaffolding to throw Sammy Guevara off the scaffolding, and Matt won. Um, this was very uncomfortable uh, simply because – Matt fell on the back of his head, and that was concrete in the back of his head. We all thought Matt was dead. I even put in the group chat. I said Matt just died on pay per view. The man didn't move for like <laughs> for like thirty I, seconds. He was just I was completely worried nothing. about him. And a lot of people said that he was he shouldn't have continued. His wife, uh, as always, went on Twitter and was blowing up the Twitter feed and you know going off like she normally does. Um, there was a lot of different reports after the fact that said that he was fine. Then his wife came out and said that, no, he wasn't fine. He's completely concussed. And then later down, I think yesterday, uh, well, not yet, yet, yesterday, then uh, Tony came out and said that he's perfectly fine. He's leaving the hospital. He'll be on Dynamite Wednesday. All in all, good, good job, like whatever. And like, so here's the question is, should the match have continued? Should the match have been called out? To, you know, should it, should it have stayed? as uh, being, you know, called off, or should Matt have Matt continued? Um, I want to get Lou's uh, opinion first, only because he's not a wrestler, and then we'll get everyone else's comments. Because um, I think we've all been there once and before, where, you know, we felt like we could still go on, and we probably we shouldn't have. So, um, especially me. So, uh, go ahead, Anthony. <laughs> I just want to say that I'm not a wrestler because I don't have $1,500 to put up. So if anybody wants to donate to help me become a wrestler, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, so, um, so I'm, I'm big on safety of the wrestlers. I don't get me wrong. I love high flying moves. I like what a lot of things that happen that are up high, but safety and Aubrey was the person that's closest to both individuals. And she threw those X's up. Do the X up. Um, I think at that point, you need to stop the match. You need, and if Matt is continually trying to go, that's when you need to get more people involved. Security. You know, Tony Khan's back there somewhere. You know, the EVPs are back there somewhere, getting ready or whatnot. But his head hit the concrete. And from that far, I don't care if you've done this a million times or not. You're still going to get con concussed enough that the ref said, we should call this. And they should have called it. Uh, go ahead, Cliff. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to agree. Like, Aubrey is pretty much, she's, she's the person in charge of the match. Like, I get it. Like, we talk about, like, you know, there's all, like, the veteran status and the vet will call the, call the, call the match as we get, get to move in. But ultimately, it's down to the ref. Like, if something happens, the ref has to be the person that steps in and calls it, right? And that's Audrey's job, which she did. She threw up the axe. She's like, hey, no, like, Sammy. She literally told Sammy, go away. Like, hey, this, he's not moving. Like, he's try, she's trying to do her job. And then for the doctor to go through and say like, oh yeah, he passed the co concussion protocol. He's, he's good to go. We should just let him keep going. Like, no, the man just fell eight feet on the concrete. Like, no, bro. No, no. Like eight feet is being friendly, Cliff. That it's, was, that was no less than 10. That was no <laughs> less than a 10 foot drop. <laughs> he fell off. He fell off and took a, and banged his uh, head off the concrete. Like he was out for 45 seconds. He laid there motionless out cold. If that happened in a UFC fight fight would have been done. Like that's it. Doc could have came in. There's this crazy thing too. Cause like in the UFC, like no doc walks in and like checks the, checks the fighters like, Hey, 
Oh, yeah. No, he's not concussed. He can keep fighting. Uh, yeah, no. Once you go out, that's it. You're out. Like, you're out, out. And it, it was the same thing that happened with Enzo. And I know you probably should be talking like th- this, but when the Vaughn villains and um, Enzo, the Enzo situation where he hit the rope and he got concussed, Doc didn't come out and be like, uh, yeah, he's, he, he's moving. Yeah, he's clear. He's good. Yeah. Get him back in the ring. Just pin him for three. Like, we'll rush to the end. Like, that didn't happen. They just stopped the match. And that's what should have happened here was that with AEW, as soon as he went out and he was out, out, granted for how much, how much time, the doc should have just been like, hey, man, like, that's it. It's done. Like, I get he wants to get up. He's trying to move. He looks sluggish. And he's done. Like, just take him to the back. We'll get him checked out. And that's all it should have been. But – to have another dangerous spot where another worker is crawling up the side of a, the side of a, like the, the tower and going up just so that you could throw Sammy off and ca- have Sammy not do the 10 count. What happens if Matt falls off there too? He dies. Like, no, no, no. I'm talking about as he was concussed on Saturday, he's trying to climb back down. He falls. What happens no, he there? Not. He, he dies. Yeah. There, there's no safe. There's no other answer, Cliff. He dies. You, you, ain't, suffi- you, you yeah. ain't surviving two drops like that in one night. Hell but no. that's my point, though. Like, he's so – he's Is that a murder or a suicide? But he's, yeah. he's, he's out of it, and he's climbing up the tower. Like, that's not – there's no safety in that. And Fucking I can see where – stupid. I can see where she was coming from. I can see where – you know, I can see where she was coming from when she was blasting on Twitter. I was like, yo, that's like, super unsafe. And, like, to me, I'm just like, man, like, it should have been called off – she just kept it, kept it going. In my so, there's my talk, to thoughts. To so like, Welcome to my TED Talk. Yeah, there's your TED Talk. Uh, Jeremy, what you got, buddy? So, is it bad that, like, I was just replaying, like, Humpty Dumpty in my head whenever it happened? Like, he sat on the wall. He had a great fall. All of AEW's officials couldn't put him back together again. I mean, it was bad. It, the match should have been called. Um, but Matt, if you're watching this, because I know you're not, because uh, we're not that popular yet, um, you can hit me on my personal line. Um, I'll drop it in the link because uh, I know we're boys. You and Jeff both loved you dearly. You guys were great from 2000 to like 2011, and then great again from like 2014 to 2016. You have children. You have a wife. It's time to hang it up. I don't think you need to be doing this anymore. I'm a firm believer that this was your spot that you called in the back. Because I don't believe a 22-year-old who has all the upside in the world and has just got back from a rape, calling someone out, like saying he wanted to rape somebody, is going to go, you know what? I think I want to spear you off of a scissor lift today. No, we watched that TLC match with you and the you with Edge and Christian and all them. We know it was your idea. So, Rebby, you sitting here getting upset over something that your husband called in the back, and Sammy's going to be the good. I I mean this in the nicest way possible, but the the AEW Green being in the situation and go, yes, sir, we can do that tonight. Because you're not going to tell Matt Hardy no. You know if Matt yeah. Hardy. He's gonna put you over. You're not going to say, well, no, I don't want to do that. And then you're definitely not going to look at Matt Hardy and go, well, what if it goes wrong? Are you kidding me? Have we seen what Matt Hardy's taken? I mean, Edge took Matt Hardy's girlfriend for a long time. There's nothing that they haven't taken from this man. Anyway. Except for his life. I think it's, I think it's time that we, um, we hang it up. I think you had a great run in TNA with your whole ultimate deletion. Uh, broken Matt Hardy was great. I think it worked for Impact. I don't believe it worked for the WWE. And it definitely is not working in AEW. So, from the bottom of my heart, being a Hardy Boys fan, from the start, I think it's time for you to just hang it up, have one last match, normal match, please, not anything that's going to get you stitches or cussed or any more lot i don't want to like 10 years from now see that matt hardy has passed away from any type of thing i want him to live a long illustrious life outside of wrestling because he does have children and a family so personally i want to see him wrap it up i think the way 
AEW handled it was terrible. Um, I don't care if his career was on the line or not. Vince McMahon died in a limousine, and then the next night came back because of – we're not going to talk about that. But Being redacted. Oh, no, no. That's, my, in his, in his that's my greatest – the greatest mystery is how they pull that off. Damien said, said, you're not coming to hell yet. Go back. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, there's ways around it. We, unfortunately, the world knows what wrestling really is. So, hmm? people understand people get hurt. I don't know. I promise you the smart marks wouldn't have been like, damn, that Guevara-Hardy match was terrible because Hardy got hurt. But now they're going, damn, that Guevara-Hardy match was terrible because he got hurt, and they let him continue. So at the end of the day, you just gave more fuel to the AEW haters to hate you even more. And I know Cliff agrees with me because he just walked off the screen. Thanks, Cliff. Yes, it gave me a lot more fuel for my fire. Oh, So go ahead, Damian. What do you think? Man. Man, that – uh. Oh, um, okay. So I'm gonna be a little honest, right? So I didn't see it until after it happened because I totally, totally like watched it late. But like seeing the match that happened after it, it kind of just—I don't know—it just felt off when I was watching it. So then finding out what happened, it was like, okay, he fell. And they stopped the match, and then they hear that he let they let this man continue, like. Dude, what the fuck were y'all thinking? What doctor in their right mind would let them do that? Like, was this a guy playing doctor and not a real doctor? Because he been there back straight too, so I think they were That was. Thanks, hon. That was just reckless. Period. Whether he wanted to continue or not, like the man hit the hit his back of his head on concrete. And I was like, that's just him hitting his head. He could have broken his back or a hip or ribs or his neck. It, it, like, it was just a bad situation. And to let the man continue was dangerous and reckless. And uh, thank you, AEW, for giving me more reason to not fucking like it. Appreciate it. Making it easy. God, that was horrible. God, I hate that company. God damn it. All right, go ahead, Idol. What you got for me? Okay. So, we've all been watching wrestling for a long time, right? Right? Yeah, we've yeah. all seen a bunch of wrestling shows, maybe, maybe in the hundreds. Yeah. And we've all seen the X be thrown up by a referee in a match. Now, let's think about all those matches where we've seen the X get thrown up. Yeah. Uh, how many of those where the X got thrown up, did the match continue? None! Very, very <laughs> because you only throw the X no, up no, 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 in no. an emergency. Well, we're not going to say that because that's not, that's not like they don't use the X as a work. We're, I'm not talking about that, Chaz. Okay, I'm just I'm saying. Talking, I'm talking about, talking about where the X is thrown up for its intended purpose. We're not talking about a work. I'm just, I'm just saying. Be no, 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 no. You know what the fuck I mean. Yeah, God damn it. Just need you short. <laughs> just I'm talking about when the X is thrown up because literally there's an emergency. <laughs> that's the end because that's the signal to the back. Hey, this guy's messed up. We can't yeah, stop everything. And they stop everything. The bell rings. That's the end of the match. There is no match after that. So Ref Aubrey threw the X up immediately. I'm t immediately. There wasn't a uh, there wasn't a um, there wasn't a hesitation. It happened immediately. And I don't know if you guys have ever had concussions before and gone to see a doctor to get you know said concussion checked out. Uh, that didn't take th uh, 60 seconds <laughs> to do a full evaluation. I've had 
How many concussions? I've had three. I've had three concussions. There is no quick test. It, it's a serious. It's like, all right, do this, do that, do this, do that. All right, now turn around, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. There's a series of tests that they'd perform of checks to see if you have one. Matt was gone like 60 seconds before he <laughs> continued to go after Guevara. So that doctor did not do a full test. He probably did, like Cliff said, checked his eyes and said, hey, how many fingers? Okay, see ya. You're cleared. Because <laughs> that's how quick it felt. I don't then, even think that happened. I think it was more of, hey, I'm good. All right, you good? You good? All right. I think that's what that was. Then, yo, and it was clear. And it was clear how out of it Matt Hardy was. It wasn't right. like, oh, he took a bad bump, got right back up like nothing happened. This man collapsed when he, he was trying to bad. grab Guevara. He was collapsing. And they allowed this man to climb scaffolding. Yeah. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I... He was higher up on that than he was on the scissor lift. <laughs> I think it's so crazy, man, because you said something that was, that's funny about the test. I imagine that backstage, like, it was like Varsity Blues when they were giving the test. Like, they're like, hey, yeah. uh... Matt, how many fingers am I holding up? And then, like, somebody back to was like, hey, he can't really tell numbers. You have to make it true or false. That's not a fair question. He's like, hey, uh, Matt, true or false, the man in front of you is holding up some fingers. And Matt was like, true. <laughs> and they're like, all right, yeah, he's good. Let him go. <laughs> That's my – may as well. Because um, – right. and I – you know, if you were looking at Matt Hardy from the duration of when the match continued, he did not look like he was there. No, he did. Matt Hardy, Matt Hardy was not there. That was Damascus. <laughs> Matt, Hardy, <laughs> Matt Hardy wasn't there. His vessel was there, but he wasn't. <laughs> uh, first time he was been broken. He looked like he Dr. should have been allowed to continue. I feel like this is a debate show where we're supposed to be debating this. And then, we're not really debating. We're just kind of still all agreeing on the same point that I feel like I'm this in a match should have been ended. I feel like no, we got Tony does. Khan on trial, and we're like, <laughs> but no, 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 here, we go, here we go, here we go, right? Here we go. Look, so then, the, this then we get really, to the this is a round table discussing. This is uh, why Tony Khan should never be near a wrestling ring again, and I don't know why. Oh, my God. Then it gets worse. Then it gets I, worse. I mean, then we get into I, the damn control all, on AEW's all, Each one of you would wrestle for AEW and, under Tony Khan if he paid you the right amount of money. I would not. I'd wrestle for him for a hot dog I and a handshake. Dang, they got health care. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I cannot. I could. And I, I would. Don't, if I don't, he, if I, he I offered me a check, I, I would be like, I would be like, so you know I say fuck you on the show every week, right? And he would be like, that's like, yeah. okay. You know I hate your product, awesome. right? You know I hate everything you guys do? You still want to give me the contract? All right, cool. I would just make sure that he knew all of these things but, first. But, but, yeah, but again, as as you're shaking his head, yeah. You're shaking your head, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. again, it goes back to what I said. Chris, with our business, it's either, no, no, hey, it's true. here's yeah, my hey, list of hey. morals. If you don't like them, here's my other ones. Yeah, here we go. Exactly. <laughs> as long as we're clear that I hate him and his company and he still wants to give me a job, we good. Yeah. Funny, That's funny. how you get signed A to AEW. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my new Twitter hashtag is going to be get Chris Idle to AEW. Hey, listen, listen. I just, hey, listen, I'm going to take his money. Don't get me wrong. But my morals, I would have to make sure that he knows what's up first. I don't want to take his money deceptively. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> would I take his money? Yes, but I'm not going to do it deceptively. Oh, I totally would do it deceptively. Oh, I know, now, I know Damien would, but see, oh, I got yeah. to have a moral line. So I'm yeah, gonna bring I don't have any. Hardy real quick. Uh, I want to get my take out, and then we're going to move on. So uh, I think we all agree. We can agree on that the match should have been stopped. Um, I will have to put out this as far as from the standpoint where Matt was. Adrenaline, and I think we all know, adrenaline is one crazy-ass drug. Yeah. I think we can all agree on that. Um, I can even uh, – everyone, you know, it's been pretty much known that, you know, I took a suicide dive once. And someone didn't, you know, wasn't there and let me, you know, fall on concrete. Won't say well, no name. Well, maybe you should have told no, the person the you were going to die. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I, I hit concrete. I bust hey. my ankle. I, now, granted, I wasn't concussed, but I wasn't out, you know, necessarily like mad. It was, you know, top of the head. But adrenaline is a crazy drug. I was ready to go, and I was gushing from the head, bleeding, and I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's continue with the next match, guys. Let's go. Let's go. So um, I, I agree the match should have been stopped. It should have continued. But from match standpoint and from the wrestler standpoint, adrenaline is, cr- is a crazy drug. You can literally have been shot three times in the leg, and you wouldn't have known because that adrenaline is pumping through you. So You're absolutely right. Yeah, no, you are. There's a whole team of people that know he was fucked up that let him continue. That's the problem. See, at that point, that's where the company is supposed to step in and make decisions for you, for your safety. And considering how woke this company is supposed to be, this was like the most unwoke thing I have ever seen in my entire life. (laughs) It was that was horrible. This, this, what this what put AEW back to sleep. They ain't woke no more. They went back to sleep after the Saturday. <laughs> yeah, they did. I don't disagree with that at all. Um, so <laughs> that's all the topics for the day. So let's move on to uh, the greatest segment in all of Three Count Podcast. It is now time for the Red Dogs Power Rankings. Danger zone. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I want some of whatever <laughs> you have it. Adrenaline's a hell of a drug. <laughs> is that what that elbow? is? Oh, is that what? Oh. Did you hit your elbow, Chaz? Yeah, yes. he hit his elbow. <laughs> he totally did. He just banged his chest his elbow. Just hey, I guess. On hey, I guess he was in the danger zone. <laughs> I guess so. So let's start this off, right? Um, these are our power rankings. Well, this is an our power. This is my power rankings for. Oh, 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 don't say that now. Yeah. <laughs> just, I don't quite agree, agree with you all that. Time. So Three let's start this off. Does not the, uh, <laughs> express the same views as the Red Dogs power rankings all the time. Wow. <laughs> wow. Anyway, so let's start this off, right? With number ten. We um, know in the top five ones. Don't say wow. Let's 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 uh let's get to Good. number ten. So we do have number ten, the nightmare, uh natural nightmare, Scorpio Sky, and Matt Cardona, and Whack. Flash, Orange Cassidy. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what that's my pick. I don't really give a shit what you guys think. Number nine, Boo. uh, what? we got Hakura Shida because let's be real, that match on AEW um, All Out that was the best night match of the night. However. We'll see later on in the power rankings about another superstar that's there. So I have to say that I this is the first time, and I, I I've always I've always shitted on the women's division AEW since inception, and I this was the first women's match in AEW that I was extremely excited for, and I would and I I unlike some of you people I paid for the show, um, huh, nerd, I <laughs> know I paid for the show too. I know you did. Oh, I'm I was so sorry for you guys. Idol, um, I I would have. This was a good match. I'm glad I paid for it just to see that match. Um, so yes, shout out to the women's division. Uh, hopefully they don't you know fall down the ladder after this. But hey, oh they will. Wait till Wednesday. Exactly. So I'm gonna keep my. I'm not gonna have my hopes up. All right. So we're gonna jump into number eight with Big E. He is the only one on there. So number seven. Um, Eric Young, um, let's be honest, man, it was awesome seeing on Impact. Uh, but also with Eric Young, we do have the main event from All Out with John Moxley on the list. Uh, we go up to number six. Uh, Matt Riddle actually is on our list. Whack. It is what it is, would you say? So we go to next, uh, number five, Naya and uh, Shayna Baszler. So Nia okay. Jackson. List, but this would, have been a match. this would have been a match at uh payback, so you know, I like that match. Number four, this was my favorite women's match of the week. I don't really give a damn what anybody else has to say about it, but Thunder Rosa is sitting at number four. I love this match, like through and through. Uh, number three is it what's that? I said, Good job, Clift. <laughs> Number Thunder Rosa three. didn't even win the match. It doesn't matter, Lou. 
I'm just going to ignore him. So number three. We're supposed to support our brother and sister in. <laughs> number three is a tie as well, but that's only because the fatal four-way Iron Man match ended in a tie. So Adam oh. Cole and Finn Balor both make this list because of that match. Whack, 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 whack. It was. I mean, a whole hour of wrestling to see a tie to promote Super Tuesday to uh, whatever. Two. No, but we're wait, there. But wait, I there's thought it was more. Fun. So, number two, let's be real, man. The new AEW tag champs, FTR. Okay. Fuck the right. revival. But yes, I agree. <laughs> and number one, we can't, we gotta be honest, man, because that payback, this was like a surprise for me. And it was a very great surprise. Uh, yeah, so Keith Lee takes the number one spot. Woo, Uncle Keith! <laughs> that spear bomb on Bring Randy Orton was sick. so fly. <laughs> yeah, it was. I brought back his theme music and stopped making him wear a skirt. Well, they came back in shorts. Like, now he wears his tight shorts that he always, like, used to always wear. I felt somebody stole his bag the night before. He's not even in a championship match at Cross of Champions. <laughs> yeah, you mark. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, I'd say Keith Lee was a transitional champion in NXT. Oh, oh that's so <laughs> no. oh. So true. So true. And it pisses me off, but we can talk about that another day. Um, oh, bask in his glory. So, with that being said, that is our show. I uh, want to give a big shout out to all those who were on Facebook and watched us on our live um, for our weekly debate yeah, show. Um, you can be, uh, catch this on our podcast channel um, in the next uh, day or two. Um, thank you for all your support. Also, make sure um, to get on ProWrestlingTees.com today. Uh, definitely check out our uh, merch. We got a couple merch uh, items on there for sale, 20% off because of this wonderful holiday called Labor Day. Promo code Labor Day, 20% off. So definitely get yourself a three-count podcast t-shirt. Also, buy my merch. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I am the Don Chaz Evans here. Buy my merch. Is the Red what Dog Wolf Miller. Right next to me is Jeremy Showtime Grimes. Um, right up here in the corner is the Idol Master, the Swole himself, Chris Idol. Next to him is Lou. Chris, I bought his merch. The Dark Lord. Bought my merch. The super villain himself, Damien Fatal. Buy Jeremy Showtime Grimes merch. Buy Clifford Red Dog Miller's merch. Hey, buy everybody's merch. Damn hey, it. I just did. I bought all your merch today. And that's, that's why right. you're on this show. And, <laughs> God damn it. Ladies so and gentlemen, if you like Lou and be uh, there, the three or, podcasts, uh, be there or be somewhere, somewhere else. Buy my merch, though. Buy my merch. I somewhere still else. hate you all. <laughs> hey, guys. It's the host of The Three Count, you know, Chaz Evans here. Make sure to let you know that I don't run shit. I don't do shit. I just talk shit. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our podcast. Um, what else did you do? You should also follow us on all social media. That's the Facebook at Three Count Podcast, the Instagram at Three Count Pod, and the Twitter at Three Count Underscore Pod. Also, if you like us a lot, a lot, you should definitely buy a, a t shirt at prowrestlingtees.com slash Three Count Pod. And that's the number three. Don't be an idiot and type in T H R E E because you're not going to find anything. So make sure you. Follow us at Three Count Pod or Three Count Underscore Pod on Twitter and buy a shirt. Be there or be somewhere else.